Good morning folks and welcome to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today out and about with my son. Mrs H has uh, finally let me out with him on my own. And we've come for a bit of a walk whilst I'm still on parental leave to Lytham Park Cemetery where I've come to have a look at the grave of a very famous man. Very famous legend and comedian in his own right. I am of course talking about Les Dawson. And uh, Les Dawson is not only buried in this cemetery but he lived pretty close by. So we're going to take a little look at his grave now. I uh, found it pretty easy. You simply just come through the gates and you just carry on burying to the right. You take the first path and it leads you right up to it basically. So, without further ado, I'm going to take a look at uh, his grave now. I'm going to swing little Toby round. I do apologise for the camera bouncing here. And we're going to make our way towards it. Very crisp morning this morning, Hot Potters. You know, it's uh, it's rather... Rather crisp, as I say. Now, his grave's just over here. And it's quite an unassuming grave, surprisingly. And unfortunately, as legend goes, there was a little bit of argument between his family, between his uh, the children from his first wife and, you know, his uh, second wife as to who should pay for the funeral. You know, a uh, bit sad, really, when it comes to that, really, isn't it? When all said and done, but um, there you go. Right, I'll whip the camera around now and we'll take a look at his grave. And there we have it. There's the grave of uh, Les Dawson, the funny man who's entertained us all on television and on stage in Panto and things like that. Truly one of the greats, as you can see. The grave, though, is just simple. Now, whether or not Les left any anything in his will for say he didn't want a big fancy headstone or not or whether or not it was down to cost who knows he's buried with his first wife who died when she was 48 years which is uh, which is sad really you know she was uh, she had a long illness and uh, tragically she died in 1986 we're now going to make our way out of the cemetery and uh, make our way towards where Les lived he bought his house in the 1960s which is only a stone's throw away from where he's buried so we'll go and do that now, shall we? Right, Hot Potters. Welcome back. I'm now going to make my way out of here. Some of these paths are a little bit icy. And I do apologise for the camera bobbing up and down. It's sort of on Toby cam. I've sort of rigged it up so it's attached to the pram. We'll probably be doing a few more of these type of videos where I have a bit of a chat with you as we make our way around places. You know, it uh, seems to fit in just right. It's fine when Toby's asleep, which he currently is, with dummy in his mouth. But uh, once he starts crying, I'm sure you'll hear him. Right then, I'm going to take my time out of here now, and join me again when we get on the main road. Right then, we're now approaching the gates here, and I'm just leaving the cemetery here at Lytham, Lytham Park Cemetery and Crematorium. Got to keep your eyes about you. It's a very busy cemetery. And we're just making our way now down Regent Road and off towards the road which would take us to where Les Dawson used to live. So, well, carefully get up onto the pavement and uh, watch me footing as we make our way down this very grand area you know as we came in Mrs H drove me here and the idea being I'll walk back and uh, there's some bonny houses up here let's put it that way you know I don't know what price they are but I'll guarantee you you wouldn't have uh, much change out of a million, if indeed any. It really came down that frost last night, here in the Lytham, Lytham St Anne's. And I'll be honest with you, Hot Potters, I didn't think I was going to get out to make this video today. But, here we are. 
sun is slowly breaking through and that's breaking up all the frost that's underfoot little Toby's a belter he is nice and quiet for his dad and I think we're now coming up to where the road is little private road and takes you around when I say private it's just one of those that uh, you know Google Maps hasn't been round but it's too narrow but uh, we should get a good look at his house I believe it has a blue plaque on it although for some strange reason they decided to put it high up on the wall as opposed to on the gate post like I showed you in the George Formby video if you haven't seen that video I'll put a link up to it now for you and here we go if we turn down here now this little road here should take us to number 19 which in Les Dawson's day was known as the Bumbles and uh, like I said back there he gave £28,000 for it back in the 60s I think at the time of his death in 93 it ended up being worth 1.3 million so he got a good return on his money you know now whether or not he lived here with his first wife I should imagine he did and brought his children up here I don't know now the real tragic part of this story is that at the time of his death He'd, uh, he'd just become a father again, you know, with his second wife, with their first child. And it's such a shame, really. You know, because uh, that little girl ended up growing up without a dad. You know, for anybody who doesn't know the story, Les went to hospital for no other reason other than a, a routine checkup. You know, something to do with uh, insurance or something. It was just one of those things, a formality. And at that point, he ended up suffering a fatal heart attack. And uh, sadly, you know, he succumbed to it. It's an horrible thought, really, that, isn't it? You know, going into hospital and not coming out. And for about 20 years after his death, they kept the house exactly as it was. As Les had left it but running costs got too great and uh, his wife was forced to sell it I believe you know when uh, in about 2012 we should be coming up to it I think just trying to keep my eyes open now They're all named these, there's no numbers on them. Just to make things awkward. But yeah, it's certainly picked a nice spot here. I just hope it's on this side and not that because the sun is shining directly through there. I don't think we're far off here. Right, rather than uh, me running round here trying to find it, I think the best thing to do is switch the camera off and join me in a moment when I've actually located the house. Right, Hot Potter as well. Uh, thanks to a, a friendly guy who used to do Les Dawson's garden, or rather he did it for his wife Tracy, I've now managed to locate the house. I was just walking past, up and down, just couldn't find it. Um, what they've done, they've since put up a big fence because obviously people kept looking over. You know, and uh, the original driveway, I believe, has gone. But it was this big house that's here on the left. With a bit of luck, we'll, uh, we'll be able to take a bit of a look at the house. Oh, it's a bit disappointing, but it's all changed. 
and here's Les Dawson's house today. Now it's had a name changed, it's now called Applegarth and probably the original entrance way was there. It's all been changed. I've just been talking to the guy who used to do his garden and uh, he said he was shocked when they sold the house but there you go with running costs. Now originally they would have had wrought iron gates similar to that and they would have the letters P and L on them. And the reason for that was, them was the pet names that they had for each other, Pooh and Lump. I don't know who was who, which was Les and which was Tracer, but uh, apparently that's what they did. It just shows you what you can do when you have the money, doesn't it? Right, folks, well, that was a little bit disappointing, to be honest, because uh, the house looks nothing like it did in Les Dawson's time. I'm sure if you could see it now, it would break his heart. You know, there's just a big fence around it, and uh, it's been renamed. There's also no sight of that blue plaque. It looks like that's been taken down. I suppose if it's your property and you have that kind of money, you can do what you want, can't you? So what we're going to do now, we're going to make our way back. Me and little Toby have come out for the walk. As I say, a bit disappointing, and to be honest, I only found the house because it's thanks to I saw the guy who used to do his garden apparently. Just uh, always local knowledge, one thing you do on hot pots when you're out and about. Don't be afraid for going ask people. And I had a nice chat with him, nice enough fella, you know. He said as Tracy and Charlotte, his daughter, they're doing okay now, you know. Probably not a bad thing really, moving out because like I said, they hadn't done anything at it for 20 years so Basically, it was just like a mausoleum, you know, and it's like living in that, so probably did them good in end moving away. Right, what we're going to do now, we're going, I'm going to make my way back to St. Anne's itself, where they actually put up a statue to Les Dawson, you know, the town, the local people, and uh, honoured him that way. So we'll take a look at that, and I think that's where we'll end this video. So join me when we get to St. Anne's. And welcome back once again folks. I've walked it down from Lytham now. I'm currently in the St Anne's area of Lytham St Anne's and I'm in the Sunken Gardens which are located on the North Promenade and that's where the statue to Les Dawson was erected back in October 2008. It was unveiled by his widow Tracer and his daughter Charlotte and at the time his widow said that the statue was larger than life and it was just like Les and uh, she was quite emotional about it, she said it even had the twinkle in his eye that he used to have. So without further ado, we'll take a look at the statue now. I believe there's a plaque further over in one of the shelters to uh, Les. We'll take a look at that as well and then I'm going to wrap this video up because uh, the light's failing now, as you can probably see behind me. Right, the statue's just here in front of me. So I'm going to whip round the camera as always and uh, we'll have a look at this statue. And there it is folks, I do apologise for the light, it, uh, it is slowly fading, we are in the late afternoon now. As, uh, as you can see it's a very good likeness, I half expect him to shout, you know, blankety blank checkbook and pen. Now there was some people who was opposed to having this put here at the time, some locals, they said they didn't want it here, they felt it would attract the wrong kind of people, whatever that meant, and the place for memorials is in the cemetery. But here it is. I'll just take a, a little look at the plaque here which is at the base near his feet and uh, we're going to make our way now over to that shelter there because there's a little bit of an information board in there about Les. So we'll make our way over there now and then we'll uh, wrap this video up and I'll get back. And this is that information board inside that shelter dedicated to Les Dawson. There's not just one in here, you know, there's others. Bobby Ball there, Amanda Barry, Roy Harper, and then there's some on the other side. But uh, as this video is dedicated to Les Dawson, I thought I'd just show it you. All the information there showing you how he started out his career, you know, right up to the end of it. Basically, he didn't do bad, did he? Playing the piano badly and making jokes about mother-in-laws. Old school, can't beat it. 
Right, I'll whip the camera back round now and we'll uh, wrap this video up. Right folks, well that's shallot, as me old boss used to say. That brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed today's video brought to you by Toby Cam. I think this will be the first of many videos where we do it this way, where I rig the camera up on the pram and I just chat into it as we go along. I also hope you've enjoyed today's video, showing you some of the places in the town of Lytham St Anne's associated with the late, great Les Dawson. So, truly one of the greats and still sadly missed. So, I'm going to head for the hills now with little Toby James because uh, he's long overdue a feed and I think he needs changing. So, until the next time, from myself and from my son Toby, it is bye-bye for now.